Good morning, Algebra. Um, I hope you all had a nice uh, Easter weekend with your family, a hoppy Easter, if you will. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, first of all, I'm still getting private comments. I'm still getting emails and things like that from y'all. Please stop. I don't care how much you write, write it in the comment section, please. Now, as far as the test goes, uh, the key was correct the whole way through. Um, I did expand number 16 to include 0 0.80 and 0 0.8 and 0 0.80. Okay. Uh, for starters, I will talk about number 16. That's what most of y'all were concerned about. So now there are four correct answers on there. 0 0.8, 0 0.80, 0 0.8, and 0 0.80. It's very important that you follow the instructions. So some of y'all are saying that, oh, I, it didn't say round to the nearest uh, whole number or it didn't say to do that. And yes, it did. Okay. And then uh, one of them was talking about uh, a number of people in a group and we directly covered that in videos and things like that. So eh, now you're you're getting to the nitty gritty stuff here, being uh, being you know wanting me to change things, uh, letting you include decimals of humans, and we directly cover that in a video. So that just tells me that you're not watching the videos. Um, that's that's a shame on you part. Okay. Um, with this video, I'm going to go over all the uh, problems one through twenty. And hopefully this will answer the majority of the questions. Um, for those of you who are saying that you feel dumb, please don't fall down that rabbit hole. Go back and watch videos. Sometimes you've got to watch the videos more than once. Now, all of the videos are roughly in the 15 minute mark, right? So um, around the 15 minute mark. So it's not like you're giving up a lot of time if you have to watch it more than once. Okay. And remember, if you, if you understand a portion while you're rewatching it, you can always fast forward, rewind, um, things like that. Go jump to different portions of the clip. Okay. Um, so do yourself a favor and, uh, follow along with these videos if you can. Um, if you'd like to open up the test again, I think you can at least view it. Um, if not, I will post, uh, the test in a PDF document. Um, so let me know someone out there, let me know in some class period, and then I'll add it to today's lessons. All right, here it goes. Uh, number one, uh, some of y'all, by the way, uh, your questions are jumbled around whenever you got them. That's fine. Uh, it's just so y'all weren't able to write down all the answers and just send it out to people. That's why. All right. Number one, it says, what is the domain of the exponential function? And then it gives you f of x is equal to 5 times 2 thirds to the power of x. It says, what is the domain? Well, we talked about this in a video. Anytime that we have a domain that's not a, uh, a real world situation, the domain is always, always, always all real numbers. Because this graph is going to either look like this or like this. And it's going to have arrows on the end of it, which means it goes to the left forever and to the right forever. It doesn't matter if it's exponential growth or decay. It means it goes left forever and right forever. So number one would have been C. Um, and I'll post a, an answer key at the very end. Number two, that was number one. Number two would have been, let's see. The graph of A is equal to 130 times 1.05 to the power of T represents the, uh, the balance of a bank account T years after the opening day. Its graph is shown below. What percent does the balance increase each year? So this one, um, you have to look at your choices A, B, C, and D, and you say, hmm, D is definitely out of the question. Uh, D says 30%, and there's way less growth than 30%, okay? If you take something simple and type it on your calculator, you, you see how each one of those tick marks on the graph is worth 80, sorry, is worth 40. Um, you can kind of guesstimate where it crosses the y-axis and it crosses somewhere around 125-ish, okay? So if you take 125-ish as your starting number and you drop these other numbers in there for B, you're going to find out that 1.05 after four years gives you that 
nice pretty point or almost gives you that nice pretty point of uh, 160. Okay, so that tells us that the percent increase each year, it's not 1.05, it's not B. Remember this is exponential growth, which represents one plus 0 0.05, and that 0 0.05 is actually 5%, okay? So that would be A. D's out of the question, C's out of the question, 0.05% would be such slow growth that it would just look like a straight line uh, across the whole graph, okay? Uh, so really, your deliberation should have only been between A and B. B, if you take off the percent sign, was what B was in the equation. A is what the percent was before you dropped it into the equation. Okay. Uh, number three, let's see here. A culture of bacteria doubles every hour. We talked about that. Uh, we said if it doubles every hour, then two goes inside of the parentheses because it's one plus an additional whole value, right? That one, whenever we do one plus or one minus, represents 100% of the original, okay? That 100% of the original is what that one represents. And if we were to double it, we would want another 100%, which would equal two, all right? Um, and then it started with 45 here and to the power of X. So we know that that one is going to be B. Um, number four says the function f of x is equal to 50 times 0.91 to the power of x models the amount of y prescription x after it is taken by a patient. Which statement is true about the graph of the function? Um, okay, so you're looking at the equation. You can imagine what the graph is. Now it says the graph has a vertical asymptote. We haven't talked about vertical asymptotes, so you can automatically get rid of that one. B, the graph crosses the y-axis at 0, 050. Well, that is possible. Um, we talked about the y-axis. You remember we talked about uh, how the y-intercept is actually A plus C. A in this scenario is 50. C is nothing. So it would cross the y-axis at 0, 50. You remember whenever it's crossing the y-axis, that's when x is 0. Uh, C says the graph has an asymptote at y equals 50. Uh, if you recall from our notes that that plus C is the asymptote, there is no plus C, so that means it's got to be zero, so that means C is out of the question. And then D, the graph increases from left to right. Increases from left to right means it's a positive shaped graph. As X increases, Y increases, and that shows exponential growth. If you look at the equation of 50 times 0.91, we know... Uh, we know that that is exponential decay because this number is less than one. All right, uh, so it would be B. Number five, a lot of y'all have questions about this one. It's probably because you didn't read it properly. Okay, number five says that there are 80,000 uh, subscribers originally, and it grows at 3.7% per, per month. So it grows, which is one plus. 3.7% would be 0 0.037 in decimal form. And it says, how many subscribers will there be after a year? Well, it said per month is the growth. How many months are in a year? That would be to the power of 12. So your answer would, and then in red, it says, do not use commas. And it says, rounded to the nearest whole number. Okay, um, so your answer would be 123718. All right. You got to read the instructions. You have to. The graph of an exponential function, number six, says uh, which dash line is an asymptote for the graph? Well, it has all sorts of dash lines all over the place, but there's only one that follows the graph. It says this one, and it gives you an R here. No, because this is going to continue to go up and out forever and ever and ever. It's definitely going to cross this line. That means it's not an asymptote. It gives you another one called Q right here. Sorry, dash line. But it crosses through it. So that one's definitely out of the question. R is going to eventually get crossed through, which definitely is out of the question. And then it gives you one that lines up with this graph. And we call that one S. And then it has another one down here, which the graph never even gets close to which is T. And we know that the asymptote is the, is the line that it gets close to but never touches. So that's gotta be S. It doesn't even get close to T. 
All right, number seven says biseth or biseth. 210 is an isotope and it decays by about 17% each day. A sample initially has a mass of 180 milligrams, right? That function, the model's A, the amount after T days. And then it says, is that true or false? Well, we know that the equation is going to have the initial amount, which is 180 times 1 minus, and then the decimal version of 17% is 0.17 to the power of time. Well, if you do some simple math and you do that, it does give you 0.83. So this answer would be true. Number eight, what is the range of the function? Okay, if you watch the range video, first of all, you can get rid of A and B automatically because A and B both have X and we know that the range is Y. If you watch the one where we talked about domain and range, we said that the front number, it says 72 times 0.9, or 0.92 to the power of X minus three. The front number gave you whether or not it's Y is greater than or Y is less than. If it's positive, it's y is greater than. So if this front number is a positive value, y is greater than. If this front number is a negative value, y is less than. And then what is y greater than or less than? This number out here, because that's the number that it can't cross. You remember that's our asymptote. So y is, this number is a positive 72, so y is greater than negative three. It's really that simple. It had to have been d. Number nine, write an exponential function. This one is kind of a tricky one because it says X is one, two, three, four is your graph. You could have plugged this one into stat and it would have given you the answer if you did exponential regression. Um, that was also on the video on how to use that. Um, if you just dropped in uh, a one, two, or three or tried to make it make sense, then it, it kind of worked. But... Um, a is the initial value. It gives you the equation, number nine says 150. That is our initial value, okay? And then in the table, it says when X is one, Y is 150. Well, that's not the initial value. That's after one year or when that's when X is one. Our initial value is when X is zero. So that can't be true. It cannot be true. Because we know that X's value, when, when X is 1, that Y is 150. So that is not the initial value. So that is false. Number 10. Um, let's see. The function G of X is equal to 160 times 0.89 to the power of X. Represents the milligrams of caffeine in the body after X hours of drinking, on, uh, drinking an energy drink. Which statement about the function is true? Okay, so number 10 is saying that we ingest 160 milligrams and it decays at a rate of, what is that, 11% an hour? One minus 0.11 would give us 0.89 uh, to the power of X. So uh, A, B, C, and D. A says the amount of caffeine is increasing over time. Well, is that exponential growth or decay? It's exponential decay because it's less than one, so it has to be decreasing over time. B says the initial amount of caffeine is 0.89 milligrams. Does that represent the initial? No, this represents the initial, so B is wrong. C, the maximum amount of caffeine is 160 milligrams. Well, we ingested 160 milligrams and it's decaying, so is it ever gonna get higher than 160 if it's decaying? No. It's never going to get higher than 160, so it has that has to be the maximum. So C is most likely the right answer. Then D, there's a horizontal asymptote at 160. No, we know that a horizontal asymptote is added or subtracted to the back, and there's nothing there. So zero will be our asymptote. Zero is the amount of caffeine that your body naturally has, right? So we're always going to go back down to zero. All right, so D is out of the question. I'm almost out of time on this video and I will start with the rest of them on the next one.